good afternoon students uh, in the last video we have seen uh, pneumatic pad controller and how we are going to have the implementation of pneumatic pad controller using a pneumatic elements here so we have got a pressure of uh, 3 to 15 psi from the output there similarly in uh, industries we'll come across a large outputs are being required there where we are going to utilize a hydraulic actuator so the hydraulic actuator will be in a position to give a very large force output so whenever the final control element requires a large output we'll use a hydraulic actuator there so whenever you want to actuate a hydraulic actuator your pneumatic uh, controller will not work where we have to go for a hydraulic pad controller so please remember that so pneumatic pad controller will be activating pneumatic valves hydraulic actuator will be actuating the hydraulic actuators electronic act uh, electronic controller will be actuating the electronic actuators so these are the uh, things we have to remember please and also just like uh, what i have discussed in the last video also uh, for the final control element we require a percentage control output that is control output in terms of percentage we have studied what is the control output as part of the definitions in the second unit okay so this control output in other way we can call it as a manipulation that is m of t so what is that uh, manipulation m of t in terms of e of t also we have seen in the last uh, video so we have written analytic equation for a pad controller that is m of t in terms of e of t so finally what we require is our manipulation output must be proportional to error input what you are going to have here and for this whenever i am going to utilize a proportional integral and derivative actions so we should get those particular terms there okay so coming to the hydraulic pad controller so this is the schematic of hydraulic pad controller so in this uh, hydraulic pad controller what we have is let us start with the top one this is referred as a major section or a main cylinder or major cylinder so where this is the position of storing uh, the fluid here and this is referred as a major piston or main piston and the output of major piston and main piston is directly given to final control element any force given to this main piston will be directly activating the final control element so this is the output position what you are going to have or we can have it as a response line and coming to next uh, thing this is referred as auxiliary cylinder just like this is referred as a main cylinder this will be referred as auxiliary cylinder and mainly the use of this auxiliary cylinder is mainly to get an output in terms of integral action so for which we require a storing capacity to get a capacitance integral capacitance we, re we require a restriction so to get a resistance there so this is a valve for reset so it is called as reset restriction valve which will be which will be giving a ri value and this is will be giving a storing uh, value that is area that is capacitance value it is going to have reset capacitance or integral capacitance one and the same and this is the auxiliary piston where the movement of auxiliary piston will be forwarded next to main piston there similarly we have this auxiliary piston is connected to pipe 2 and the main piston is connected to pipe 1 here so there is a pipe 1 and pipe 1 pipe 1 and pipe 2 pipe 1 is connected to main cylinder pipe 2 is connected to auxiliary cylinder please remember this and uh, then we have a jet pipe that means whenever you want to send any oil supply let us take my hydraulic element or hydraulic uh, fuel what i am going to utilize is oil there so for the oil supply will be sent so through this jet pipe here <coughs> sorry <coughs> sorry uh, this oil supply is given to jet pipe and where from this jet pipe may be connected to pipe 2 or pipe 1 so jet pipe moves to the left it is connected to pipe 1 jet pipe moves kind of, kind of moves to right side it is connected to pipe 2 so this jet pipe connection whether it has to be connected to pipe 1 or pipe 2 it is depends upon the motion from measuring element so what we have discussed that is there will be an error input comparison of set point and measuring element here i have not shown um, set point and uh, measuring element directly we are going to have an 
error input there that is motion from measuring element compared to set point proper that is referred as error input and that error input will be giving the input to jet pipe based upon which it can move left or it can move to right so that is what this arrow indicates there whenever it is connected to when it is moving to left it is connected to pipe 1 whenever it is connected moving to right it will be connected to pipe 2 here and this jet pipe is connected to other elements what are the other elements one is rate bellows rate restriction valve that is valve here pressure valve so fluid uh, fluid pressure valve and rate bellows similarly we have a proportionating bellows to get the kc value here and uh, we can see this the connection what we are going to have to auxiliary piston it is connected to this side direction so other side these are been connected and it is been supported by a pivot so this pivot can have at this position uh, my pivot can be have can we we can have a position at this position so based upon the proportional band what we require this pivot position will be kept here so based upon requirement the pivot position can be moved to left down this side direction or this side direction please remember this pivot position once i am moving means i am going to vary the proportional band values the proportional band value already we have seen in the last video proportional band is nothing but 100 by kc any variation to proportional band adjustment will impact the kc value so once you are moving the pivot means automatically we are affecting the kc value here with respect to proportion proportioning bellows here okay so these are the different elements here the so elements are main cylinder auxiliary cylinder proportioning bellows rate bellows re reset restriction valve rate restriction valve pipe 1 and pipe 2 and jet pipe and oil supply motion from measuring element output to final control element okay so these are the schematic and different elements now we we'll let us see the working principle of hydraulic pad controller so just like how we have seen a working principle of pneumatic pad controller we will see the working principle of hydraulic pad controller so to start with for an input measure and for an for an input measured signal with respect to set point variation so let us assume that my measured signal is been varied and correspondingly set point is been compared and accordingly error input is been generated here and this error input due to this error input the error input signal moves the jet pipe to the right that is my assumption so for a given in error input my jet pipe is moving to right here so whenever this is my let us assume that this is my jet pipe it is moving to right here whenever it is moving to right what is happening the jet pipe is connected to pipe 2 that is what i have written oil supply will be moving will be from jet pipe to pipe 2 so oil supply will be passing through this jet pipe and again it will be passing on to pipe 2 so whenever the oil supply is popping to pipe to where it is going it is going on to the auxiliary cylinder here so more oil will be passing through the jet pipe then pipe 2 and then to auxiliary cylinder and due to this what is happening whenever more fluid is there in this due to this hydraulic force what happens this auxiliary piston will be moving to right side so whenever it is moving to right side due to supplied oil both main and auxiliary pistons moves to the right so auxiliary piston moving right what happens whenever it is moving right automatically what are the fluid existing across this point will be forced into the main piston so whenever this additional some fluid is there and added to this fluid some additional fluid is coming due to which what happens the major piston will be moving to right this is impacting where it is impacting the final control element so more fluid more force output we are going to get here so due to oil first auxiliary piston will be moving right due to this the main piston will be moving right and due to this we are going to give a output to a final control element that is what happened due to supplied oil both main and auxiliary pistons moves to the right due to filled up oil in both the cylinders here which results a more force output to the final control element here so in parallel we will see the other side what is happening to the pivot this is the part of pivot one side what is happening to the pivot other side what you are going to have in parallel feedback link connected to the piston auxiliary auxiliary piston moves to right so whenever it is 
moving right that means due to this the auxiliary piston moving right where it is being connected it is connected to pivot here automatically what happens this linkage will try to move to right side whenever it is moving right what happens to the pivot left side it will be moving to this side direction whenever it is moving this direction what happens the proportionating bellows will be expanded whenever the proportional building is expanded with a particular restriction the rate bellows will also be expanded here so which implies both bellows connected to other side of pivot expand that is what are the other bellow two bellows one is proportionating bellows and the other one is rate bellows both will be expanding due to the movement across obtained across this particular auxiliary piston here with a fixed restriction value of a rate, reset, rate restriction as well as reset restriction this is happening here and whenever the rate bellows and proportionate bellows is expanded what happens this link will be moving to left so earlier my jet pipe is in this direction now it will be moving to this side direction with a new position here the jet pipe takes a new position towards the left here that is what happening to the jet pipe here so this principle of operation we have taken for a measured signal making the jet pipe to the move to the right side and connect into pipe 2 similarly you can think that for a given error input my jet pipe is moving to left side accordingly my pipe 1 is being connected and accordingly what is happening to the process you can write on your own please write in the similar lineup for an input measured signal with respect to set point variation error input signal moves jet pipe to the right this is my assumption and i have written like this you can write error input signal moves jet pipe to the left that is my assumption what happens here oil, oil supply will be moving from jet pipe to pipe 1 whenever the pipe 1 is connected what happens to main and auxiliary pistons accordingly what happens to the complete process operation you have to write on your own here own so students please make sure that whenever a question is given on hydraulic PAD controller or pneumatic PAD controller you have to write for both the things that means whenever for let us take an example of hydraulic PAD controller here I have written for jet pipe to the right I have written these things similarly jet pipe to the left what happens all that also you have to write so to give some sort of exercise I have left over that you have to write on your own and you have to complete the principle of operation here hope uh, every student uh, um, has understood uh, the hydraulic PAD controller so the main uh, thing here is the pneumatic PAD controller hydraulic PAD controller the schematics are very very important so once you are done with the schematic you please practice schematics of both the things pneumatic PAD controller and hydraulic PAD controller so once you are well versed with the schematics and properly drawn and with mentioning a different elements this becomes easier for you principle of operation so simply mugging up the working principle cannot help you out so we have to draw the schematic in a proper way you have to practice at least three to four times the schematic with the mentioning elements please remember all the mentioning elements and accordingly you write the working principle okay thank you so in the next video we will see the electronic PAD controller which is a simpler uh, PAD control when compared with hydraulic uh, PAD control and uh, pneumatic PAD controller. Thank you.